Hi, during this uh, video I'm going to take you through um, the key features that providers can use, um, the key functions within the Team Kinetic system. So we're going to start with uh, registration. Every provider will need to register first. So this is a new registration screen as of version 2 of Team Kinetic. Um, click on the register and join your community. And down the bottom here it says register as a provider to add opportunities. So we click on that link, put in the organization name. phone number. Now we've got this profile web page here. So this is a mini web page that sits within the Team Kinetic system. Um, essentially, um, it's a web page just for yourself as a provider. So it shows images um, and um, information about your volunteer program, the kind of opportunities you offer. And at the bottom of the page, it lists um, just opportunities that are available to you. So if someone turned up at so this is Steve's tennis club. If someone turned up at a tennis club and said, "Look, I really like what you're doing here. I want to help out. Um, you know, volunteer for the for the tennis club," I would I could direct them through to my provider profile page, which is this address here. This is what it's given you the the option of forward slash whatever is typed in here, and that provider profile page then it's only going to show them information about just me as a tennis club and the opportunities that are available because that's what they said they're interested in. doesn't mean that they can't search everywhere else in the system by clicking on the search button, but the information they see first and foremost is about me as a tennis club and the opportunities that I offer. So that's the provider's profile page. We put in our address. Make sure you select the address once you put in the postcode and click search. Make sure you select it from the drop down. Click on the select button. Um, this is a custom question, so you may or may not have this. You may have more questions in here depending on which system you're actually using. But um, ask, answer them as best you can. Opt in to receive a marketing emails. These are not kind of general marketing emails. These are if the administrators of the system want to send something kind of a generic email out. Not particularly important or specifically for you. Um, you will always receive emails if a volunteer joins your opportunity, etc. This is about kind of generic, we call, the, we call them bulk emails, um, which might be sent out by the administrator. So I'll keep that on. Agree to the T's and C's. Obviously, you can click on there if you want to see the T's and C's and register. Okay. Now, what it's done now is it sent an email through um, for, to confirm my email address. And um, so I'm going to go and click on that email okay I click on the link on the top of the email which verifies the email address takes me back to the login screen then log back in again and that's it I'm logged into the system so the next thing I need to do is do my provider um, profile page because obviously if someone um, if I send someone to that provider profile page, I want images on there and information. Also, if anyone's searching for any opportunities, next to the opportunities names, the volunteers will see the name of you as a provider. And if they click on it, again, it will take them through to the provider profile page. So we need to get that um, kind of set up. So you want to complete your profile. These options here, you can get to from the menu as well. As you can see, that's a public profile, which is essentially the same page as this here. Click on that, and we need to add a logo. Just put any old thing in here. Okay, make sure you click save afterwards. You can zoom in and kind of drag this around if you want and to get make sure you're looking at getting the right segment of the image. And beneath here, again, it's just um, reiterating here the um, the provider profile page that was set up. I can click on there to copy it if I want to copy it and email it to somebody. And I put in information here, information about my volunteering at the tennis club. Okay, you can change lots of, you know, you can change the text on here if you want to. Um, you can put images in there as well if you wanted to uh, within this segment. Um, if you want to make it really fancy and you you understand, if you know what HTML code is, then you can click on the source button and you can kind of uh, play around with it to your heart's content and make it really fancy. Um, but that'll do for now. Click on the save button. Okay. I want to pre preview the page to so see what it looks like to vo any volunteers who go to my provider profile page. And that's what it looks like at the moment. Obviously, there's no opportunities listed below. So uh, next thing I'm going to do is create an opportunity. So we go to opportunities down to create opportunity. 
this is probably the most complex page on the whole system and it has to be because there's so many variations of types of opportunities that, that you that you may want to create um, the first two options I should say at this point depending on your system you may or may not see some of these options here but I'll go through them all I've kind of allowed everything to be visible at the moment so uh, um, so if you don't see it don't worry it just means that it's been switched off by your administrator so we've got two options at the top um, all um, access all advanced features and quick simple opportunity they both create opportunities in the same way this just asks for the minimal information essentially and um, uh, it, it assumes a lot if that makes sense it makes lots of assumptions on the options where this one here will show you every single option available so if you see if you click on here we've got uh, five or six questions here if we click on this one here we've got lots and lots and lots of questions so we're going to do the full all advanced features option so first of all we've got role at the top um, I'm not going to choose a role but for those of you who can see that a role is essentially um, a group of some hoops that the volunteers may have to go through before they're allowed to get onto the opportunity so for example you might say well this is a, a medical based volunteer and opportunity so I want them to see the health and safety video and sign this form and do yada 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 um, and that can be created as a role so that's all I'm going to say at this point a role is just a set of hoops which are like prerequisites to get onto the opportunity um, opportunity badges this is um, you may or may not see this in your system and um, it's if you have things like the Duke of Edinburgh award you might say well this opportunity is suitable the hours can go towards the Duke of Edinburgh award and that's another way of allowing you to group opportunities together and the volunteers will be able to see these badges when they go to join the opportunity see that okay this one's this one's um, you know works with Duke of Edinburgh for example or it might be something like suitable for those visually visually impaired it might be that kind of badge that you want to create you want to differentiate opportunities in that way key thing to keep in mind is a badge can be used um, is visible to the volunteers when they go and join the opportunity okay select opportunity image okay if I click on choose file here I can choose an image for it okay now in future when you create opportunities you may already have, have, have if it's my second opportunity I'm creating then it will show me the images I've used for my previous opportunities you don't have to keep finding new images every time you can use some of your old images again and again if you want to I'm going to choose that image there, put in opportunity name. This is dual language, hence why it's Welsh over here. Tennis coach, description here. Now, this is your opportunity to, um, with the opportunity name and description and the perks and skills required, it's to try and um, make the opportunity sound interesting. This is going to be one of the key things that um, defines whether a volunteer goes on the opportunity. So you've got to try and make it sound interesting. Um, and make it sound exciting is also give enough information so they know what they're going to be doing you know, I'm not just saying kind of volunteers required you know we need your help well, that doesn't really tell them what they're going to be cleaning bins or what they're going to be doing when they get there so you need to uh, make sure it's quite clear what they're going to be doing um, and also you know things like in the skills required say no skills required it's your chance to break down those not down those mental barriers that may be between the volunteer and joining the opportunity Okay, so if you can think of anything that might put them off, then mention it within these deep, uh, first four fields here. Perks, I might say something like um, as much tea as you can consume in a day. Okay, then we've got categories. These are, are going to be different for each system, um, but they're mainly for reporting purposes. Volunteers can search by category. Um, but when we look at the data, they don't tend to, in all honesty, they tend to either type in search words which essentially look at the opportunity name or they um, just click on the search button and scroll down like they do in Facebook we're gonna say uh, ball sports in there search tags so this is if you think there's any words um, which people might type in where you'd still want it to bring up this opportunity any so any search words so for example this is tennis coach I might say um, racket maybe um, ball um, that kind of thing you know umpire Um, is opportunity accessible? It says wheelchair accessibility. Um, is it part of a larger event? So an event, we're going to come on to it shortly, but an event is essentially a group of opportunities that has something in common. So maybe an event is, is in like Glastonbury or something like that, where you say, well, this Glastonbury event, we need someone setting up equipment, we need someone handing out refreshments, someone doing the car park, all these different things, but they're all part of the same event. So what we can do is, is um, we can link them through to create an event and we can link the opportunities through to an event and that appears within the search pages 
So although all the individual opportunities like setting up equipment, um, you know, a litter picking, the car park are all separate opportunities, the volunteer will be able to see the Glastonbury event within the search page. They can click on it and that's going to take them through to um, a page listing all opportunities which are linked to that event with images about that event and information. Okay, and that's called the events profile page. So essentially exactly the same as your provider profile page, but it's just for the event. It has its own unique web address as well. But we'll come on to that shortly. That's what an event is. A group of opportunities that has something in common. So we go down to location type. Okay, so we've got a single specific location, cross an area with no specific locations, virtual or volunteer from home will use provider's address. So a single if it's the same, if it was a um, let's say a tennis club like this, I might say, well, a, the tennis coach is going to come to the tennis club. So it's going to be the same address as me as a provider. So the opportunity address is the same as a provider's address, in which case I'd just click on this one here. If it was slightly different, but I knew exactly where it was, I might say a single specific location, put in the postcode and search the same way I normally do on the system and locate where it is. And um, then I've got these two in the middle. So I've got virtual or volunteer from home. Okay, so that's things like anything they can do on computers, they could probably do from home, social media and this, that and the other. Then across an area with no specific locations. So that's where you don't know exactly where it is or you don't want to say exactly where it is at this stage. Um, and it will allow you to kind of drop a pin on the map to show approximately where that is. So an example of, of one of those would be, say, befriending the elderly, where you would say, okay, then, well, um, I don't want to say for obvious reasons exactly where this elderly person lives, um, but I need to show you roughly so you know where to go if you're going to have a cup of tea with them, have a chat with them, or whatever the uh, opportunity is. So in order to do that, I can say across an area with no specific locations. I can zoom in on the map, and the thing it cares about is just where this person is. That's all the system cares about. So I can drop it in there and say um, Kersley area. The volunteers can see that, and the volunteers can see where I've dropped the pin on the map. I can also put in some notes for myself if I want to, and um, and that's it. But, okay, but for this one here, I'm going to go down to use provider's address. Okay, then we've got promoting options. Um, so first option here is secret opportunity. So secret opportunity is essentially an opportunity that's not visible within the search results. You think, well, why on earth would I want to do that? The reason you might want to do that is you might have an opportunity where you say, say it's a a tennis coach where I say actually I, there's five volunteers that I kind of work with and I, I only want them to be aware of it I don't want to broadcast it out to anybody else in which case I can create a secret opportunity and I can promote essentially kind of share that opportunity with those five volunteers so only myself and those five volunteers know it even exists okay um, share an opportunity with try volunteer and that's our national site um, if you do that, you have to be aware. It's fine. It just means more. There's more eyes on the opportunity. Um, again, you may or may not see that option there. Um, but if there's more eyes on the opportunity, you've got more chance of people joining it. But these people won't be volunteers who've registered via your system. They might. They 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 may have registered via the national try volunteering.com system. Then we've got travel information. So this might be like um, I don't know number of 51 bus or parking available around the rear, that kind of thing. Expenses paid. So if you say yes to this, you can put in what expenses are paid, kind of 45 pence a mile, something like that. And probably want to put in a maximum amount up to a maximum amount as well. Be useful. Files and documents, this could be your health and safety form. So this is files and documents of volunteers when they join the opportunity that they can download from the opportunity. So it might be a health and safety form, for example, it might be a map of the area, um, anything you want. We've then got do volunteers need to apply first? So this is a key one. Do volunteers need to apply first? Now, if you say no to this, it means that when they go to the opportunity, all the buttons will say join. They can click on the join button and it's assumed that they're going to turn up on the day. Okay, you, you may well phone them up beforehand or drop them an email, but even if you didn't, they, all the communications will be telling them to come along on the day. If you say yes to this, then it means that it's, it's an applying opportunity. There's an application process, essentially. So first of all, the buttons on the opportunity don't say join, they now say apply. And when the volunteer clicks on it, it says, thank you for applying, you'll be informed at a later date if you are successful. Okay. Um, and then if they do click on the apply button, it will send you an email. Um, you'll go in there and you'll see an extra box against the opportunity saying applicants, because they're not actually volunteers at that stage, they're only 
applicants on the opportunity. And you'll be able to either approve or deny the applicants one at a time. When you approve them, it will send them an email back saying, congratulations, you're on the opportunity. Okay. So I'm going to say no and keep it nice and simple. Ask for experience when joining. Um, this is an extra box that appears when the volunteer joins the opportunity, which says, um, please describe in a few words why you believe you are suited to this particular opportunity. So, I mean, you could click on the volunteer's name and you could search through, you know, look at their CV and look at the qualifications if they've added them onto the system. But quite often it's, it's, it's a lot faster um, uh, or easier to shortlist a, lot, a large amount of people anyway um, if you just ask for experience. And they say, oh, I've got 10 years experience doing tennis coaching, in this example. I say, oh, okay, that makes sense. They'll probably be a good coach. Um, so that's ask for experience when joining. It's also a good opportunity to try and get a bit of insight into what they can kind of bring to the table, I suppose. So you, you might be able to, before they even turn up, think, actually, this person's done this for quite a long time. So I'm going to put them in charge of these two other volunteers because, um, because they're going to be able to kind of lead them in the right direction. Only provider linked volunteers. So here is a, another key one here, provider linked volunteers. What does that mean? So as a provider, you can't see every volunteer on the system, obviously. Um, you, any volunteer on the system can join your opportunities, depending on how you set them up, but potentially could join your opportunities. But, but you, you can see some volunteers' information. You can see volunteers who are linked to you, and you can communicate with them directly. And you can even manually add them onto your opportunities. Okay, without them joining them, you can manually add your linked volunteers onto your opportunities. So who is a linked volunteer? So linked volunteers are done in one of four ways. Either firstly, they either join one of your opportunities, um, future, present, or past. Okay, they're automatically linked to you. Um, the second way is if you invite them, so I'm going to come on to shortly, there's an invite function. If you invite any volunteers onto the system, um, then they'll register in the normal way, but they will automatically be linked to you. The third way is there's a register button on your provider's profile page. And if they register via using that button, again, they'll be linked to you because it's assumed why are they on your provider profile page registering instead of the normal system front page. So it's assumed you have some kind of affiliation with them. And the fourth and final way, if an administrator manually links the volunteer through to you, which is what they can do. But the main way you'll see is a volunteer joins one of your opportunities or you invite them onto the system that, that most volunteers are linked in that way. Um, maximum sessions per volunteer. So there's another phrase here, sessions. A session, so an opportunity is what is essentially the information about you know what they're going to be doing and who can get onto it. But sessions are exactly when and for how long the volunteer needs to turn up for. I'm going to come on to them shortly in a bit more detail. Well, then you've got age restrictions, gender restrictions, team leader settings. You may or may not see these. Um, don't worry about it too much. Um, post opportunity options. So can volunteers upload files back onto the opportunity? So you might have the health and safety form, which you've added up here in the downloadable section. Okay. But then you also might want them to be able to upload their completed health and safety forms, in which case you need to set this to yes. Okay, and you'll be able to, when you go to the opportunity, you'll be able to see all that, who's uploaded them and see all those files there. So before you even turn up for the opportunity, you can see exactly, um, you, can, you might have completed health and safety forms all signed and ready to go. You can also add surveys to the opportunity, SurveyMonkey or Google Forms um, if you wanted to, which they will, com volunteers can complete um, after they've attended the opportunity. And then we've got sessions and times. So this is what I mentioned a bit further, a bit earlier on. So they're broken down into session based or flexible so if you know exactly when and for how long in this case a tennis coach turns up for then you say it's session based okay then you can create the sessions and it creates almost like well you have the ability to create like a rotor essentially and i could say well it, i need them every tuesday night at seven o'clock for the whole year so that's 52 sessions i might say um if it was um say a committee member on that tennis club when I wouldn't know exactly when the committee meetings are going to be. So I, I can't create the sessions. So that'd be a flexible opportunity where I'd say, well, it starts today and it goes on for a year. Um, I, I'm going to discuss it as I'm, you know, with a volunteer directly when they need to turn up because I don't know when the committee meetings are at the moment. But when I do, I'll tell them when they'll turn up and they can, the volunteer can then log their hours as and when they go along. Okay, we're going to say this is session based here. Say 
I can add on recurring sessions, which means there's a, you know, it's every week, for example, or if there wasn't a pattern to it, I could add on individual sessions um, using this option here. But I'm going to say it's recurring sessions. It starts today. Let's try to be fancy here. I do. Starts today. And it goes on for, oh, sorry, starts at seven o'clock in the evenings, it goes on for two hours every week for 12 months. It's going to create maximum volunteers per session. Maximum, vol not on the opportunity, maximum volunteers per session. So there's 52 sessions. What's the maximum I'd, I'd want to turn up for each of those sessions? Well, I suppose it's, I only need one coach, but um, yeah, so I'll just put one in there at the moment. Now, if you want to, if you, if it's like a, an, a, an application process opportunity, it's an applying opportunity, you may ask for more and then shortlist those volunteers. But I'm going to say it's one at the moment for this one here. And it said Tuesday, didn't I? Tuesday, add new opportunity. Okay, so the opportunity has been created. It's closed at the moment. Okay, it's awaiting authorization. Okay, so um, at this stage here, there's we've registered as the provider, we've um, created our provider profile page, and then we've created an opportunity. We can't do much more now until we've been authorized by the administrators. That's kind of the limit. Once we're authorized by administrators, we can go ahead and invite volunteers and, and, and everything else. So um, I'm just gonna quickly do that now in the background. Okay, I've just gone into the admin side of things and, and authorized you as a provider and authorized the opportunity. So if I refresh the page now, this should go green, which it does. The opportunity is now, it's not closed anymore, it's now open, which means volunteers can join it. Um, you can, if you want to stop volunteers joining in at any stage, you can close it by clicking that button there. And then you can reopen it when you're happy to um, at any time. Okay, it doesn't affect any volunteers who are on the opportunity. That's not going to affect them. Um, it just stops any new volunteers getting onto the opportunity. Um, we then got mute emails. Don't worry too much about that. It just stops system sends automated emails out when you do specific things within the opportunity, like changing the time or date of an opportunity uh, of a session, um, and that can mute those emails. But I won't go into that too much at this stage. We've got page views here. This shows us how many volunteers are actually looking at the opportunity. Okay, so we're going to come back to this shortly. But for now, we're going to um, um, look at the invite volunteers function. Okay, so I'm going to go to uh, manage volunteers down to invite volunteers. Okay, so on the invite volunteers page, um, we can send our invites. So I'll put in a um, I put in a separate them with commas, or I can upload them from a spreadsheet if I want to. I'll just send one out at the moment. Okay, so it's then moved down to invited volunteers. So the great thing about doing it this way is you can see exactly if they've gone on to register here. Okay, so red cross means they haven't gone on to register. Um, and you can also send out the re-invite. So if you wait a couple of weeks and they've still not responded, you might say, I'll, I'll give them another try and re uh, send out another re-invite there. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to uh, go through register as a, a volunteer and um, essentially join the opportunity. Okay, but I won't have to show you that. So from the um, volunteers perspective, um, they log in here. Um, they'll click, type in what they're searching for. Well, they may just click on search. Tennis, it comes up here. So it's picked up tennis coach. It's the only opportunity with the word tennis in it. Um, they can see the image that you upload, they can see who's um, providing it. If they're logged in, they can see your phone number and your email address, um, basic information um, that we've done when we set it all up. They can follow you as a provider if they want to, which means that they'll receive an email every time you add up new opportunities. Um, they can also um, see what the routes are taken. He's, both the locations are using the same address, but this will route them, show them the route either by um, bike or by car or walking, etc. They can then see all the different sessions that they can join down here. As you can see, they say join. Now, if I said if it was an applying opportunity, it would say apply here, but they all say join, which means kind of first come, first serve, um, and they run it straight away. So they, and there's a little, some other opportunities listed down here, which is similar. So they click on the join button here, takes them through to the sessions page, which essentially just lists them in an easier way so you can see more on the page. And they click on three sessions here. So yeah, I can do the tennis coaching that week, that week. I'm on holiday that week, but I can do it again that week. 
that week and that week and they join the sessions that they want to join so when I leave them to click them again and it would make them leave um, so let's go back and see what that looks like from your perspective from the provider's perspective okay so at that stage you would have received an email telling you that a volunteer has joined this opportunity and you log back into the system and let's see exactly how that appears to you so you go down to your opportunities click on your opportunity okay and let's go through these um, opportunities options down here now under volunteers we can see there's a volunteer who's just joined okay and I can click on their name and it take me through to their um, profile page where I can see all their information let me show you that okay and I can look at the timeline and see what things they've done and their profile basic profile information in there if I want to because they're now linked to me so I can now see that information okay um, let's get back to the opportunity Okay, we've also got on the um, some of the information how many volunteer hours have been logged, how many provider hours have been logged. So this is a new thing. I haven't spoke about the logging of hours yet. So both volunteers and providers log hours. Okay, um, they both should be the same. So if the volunteer says, "Well, I've done three hours," then the provider usually says, "Yes, you've done three hours." Um, the reason why we ask for both. Um, is um, it's basically as, as an audit so we can see if there's any kind of big differences as the admins can see if there's any big differences um, and then kind of try and get to the bottom of them the one that's important is what you say the hours that you log as a provider that's what drives all the reports that's what drives all the volunteers incentives and that's probably why they will phone you up or, or ask you to log your hours if you don't so it's very important that you do log those hours Okay, we've got some other information here about you know uh, with disability this that and the other I can click I can um, whether they've got a an email address stored in the system and this that and the other if I select them here then I've got an action bar at the bottom which lets me either send them an email or put them in a volunteer group which I'll come to shortly and a couple of other things so that's the volunteers tab I'm going to jump back to the summary tab which is the first one that appears when we go to the opportunity okay so this shows me how many volunteers are on the opportunity um, don't worry about those slots filled how many hours logged so whenever it doesn't say which hours it means it's provider hours it's your hours essentially that have been logged um, how many hours to log we've got that graph that we spoke about some basic kind of KPI information here about volunteers who are on this particular opportunity and we've got the volunteers tab I've just been through that we've got the sessions tabs this shows all of the sessions and who's on each of the sessions that one one person there one person there no people on that one I can click on it and it scrolls down and shows me who the person is with their email address and phone number I can um, add people to this particular session if I want to by clicking on the plus button and typing in their name there okay um, I could change the date of the session so I'm going to change this one now and put this say I put this one in the past okay just so moved into the past now into the month of July instead okay um, I could email everybody on this particular session if I want to Clicking on this button here. So if I wanted to email everybody on the opportunity, go to the volunteers tab, which is going to show me everybody on the opportunity, regardless of what sessions they're on. I could select all and click on email. That's going to email everybody on the opportunity. If I want to email just people who turn up on specific days, specific sessions, essentially, then I go to the sessions tab and click on the email there. I can also delete um, the sessions if I want to. And um, I can add sessions here, like it gets to the end of the year and I want to add another year's worth, I can do that. By pressing, this, by pressing this button here um, I can also there's another function here which is the add volunteers which if you need to move around a lot of volunteers maybe add 20 volunteers to 10 different sessions then you can you can do that kind of mass moving around the volunteers under this uh, using this add volunteers button here We've got login hours now it's going to let me log hours now because I moved that session into the past didn't I if you remember a few minutes ago almost like I knew what I was doing and by doing that and the system says well a sessions already happened and there was somebody on it so you should be able to log hours so to log hours you just click on the thumbs up or thumbs down and then it asks me for some uh, make some comments on the volunteers this is basically just thank you messages okay and I can save that um, save that there and the volunteer will be able to see that feedback or that message um, then it's asking me okay do you want to log hours I can log the maximum hours now this the system knows that the session this person was on was, was one hour long I think it was it might have been two let's see two hours long 
So it's, and it knows that. So it's two hours long, and one session has passed, so it's, it knows it can only log two hours. So when I click on log maximum hours, it says, well, you haven't logged on for, these, for that session, so it's going to log two hours. But the volunteer still hasn't logged their hours yet. If I said, actually, they, they meant to turn up for two hours, but they went after the first hour, I could log individual sessions, and that gives me the ability then to specify exactly how long they turn up for each individual session. Okay. Um, if you've got loads to do, you can use the bulk feedback option, you know, and it will leave the same feedback and log the maximum hours for everybody if you want to go down that road. Then the next options down here are basically the information you created when you um, you entered when you you know sorry that you entered when you created the opportunity. So here's the details, location, restrictions, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay, we've got downloadable documents like a health and safety form, uploaded documents like a completed health and safety form. Um, you can download a CSV, which is essentially Excel, um, if you want to. We've got chat rooms here. So the chat room is the ability for volunteers um, to talk to other volunteers and yourself and ask questions. Okay, you may or may not see this. depends on if it's set up with your system. But if you do see it, um, then you can add comments in there. Um, hi, for example. Okay, you can add a comment in there, which other vol well, the volunteers will be able to see, um, and they'll be able to reply to. It's usually things like a volunteer might say, "Well, is anyone taking waterproof clothing tomorrow?" And then another volunteer says, "Oh, yes, I am." Or you might jump in there and, and answer that question for them. Okay, um, I'm going to move my image across there. We then got feedback. Okay, so that's the message here. So you can see the feedback from yourself and from the volunteers on that opportunity. We've got the promote. Remember I mentioned before about the secret opportunity. This is all, how does anyone know about it? It says you can promote it. This is on this page here. So you, you might create a secret opportunity, go down to the promote tab, and then invite them via email, or essentially just share that web address there, which is the web address for the actual opportunity. So if you shared that with, with five volunteers, and yourself and those five volunteers would then know about the opportunity if it was a secret opportunity, that is. We then got convert and copy. Converting is converting from a flexible opportunity to a session-based one, vice versa. Don't worry too much about that, but you definitely would be using the copy function, very useful function. So that creates an exact replica of the opportunity. So say if I wanted another tennis coach um, in the future, but it was at a, a, a club down the road, then I could just go to this opportunity, copy it, and then change the location, and that's it. I've then got two opportunities which are identical in every way apart from the location. Okay, um, It might be that you think, well, it's exactly the same opportunity that we did last year. So you, you find the one last year, you copy it, and then you just change the dates over. Okay. Um, and last but not least on the list, we've got the delete button. So this is going to, if it never should have been created, it's going to completely delete the opportunity. Now, I should say delete means it should never have been created. If, if you just don't want it to be visible anymore to volunteers, you can just close the opportunity. The system will automatically close it. It's not like you have to stay on top of it. So once all of those sessions have passed, um, then the system knows it says, well, there's nothing for the volunteers to join anymore. So it will automatically close the opportunity for you. So you don't have to worry about kind of sitting on there for years and years um, to come. So that's the opportunity management page. Okay, next, we're going to look at how to search for volunteers. So let's put that back over there. If you go to volunteer, um, manage volunteers, down to search volunteers here, okay, we can see there's one volunteer on the system here. Um, I could search for them by, I could select that volunteer by clicking on the checkbox. So these are all your linked volunteers you're seeing down here. Um, cl click on the checkbox, which gives me the action bar at the bottom here, where I can email them or add them to a group and this unlink them if I wanted to, this, that, and the other. I can see the basic information. I can click on their name, which takes me through to their profile page, showing me all the information on the volunteer. I've got some options here, some fast options here on the right-hand side about sending an email. It's the same as doing it down here. It's the same thing, essentially. Um, I can also filter volunteers if I want to, using these filters. Say, so show me everyone who's over a certain age or from a certain area or a certain gender. Volunteers who, um, who have, I don't know, joined opportunities of a certain category, and this, that, and the other, so, or part of a certain group here. So I can do that from the filter. So definitely get yourself familiar with those filters, extremely useful. Now this page you'll see is very similar to your opportunities page. Okay, So it shows similar layout. I can select the opportunity, and I get a similar bar at the bottom. So they work in the same way with filters, slightly different filters, but everything, everything works in exactly the same way. 
Okay, next we're going to look at groups. So what are volunteer groups? Volunteer groups are groups of volunteers. And you can create a group. Click on the add group here. And you might say, this is my coaches, for example. Click on the add button. Okay. Um, and then I've got a group. But there's nobody in that group. Okay. So I need to add some volunteers into that group. So if I go to search volunteers, click on a volunteer, and down the bottom here, it says change group. And I can select the group, coaches, and add them to that group. Which means in future, if I want to quickly communicate with just my coaches, I can go to the search volunteers page, go down to group member down here, and then select the group. Get rid of that one. Select the group, click on search, and it's going to bring up any volunteers within that particular group. Okay. Um, also on that group page, you might have seen this big yellow image at the top. So any volunteers that register using that web address there, so you could send it out to them, it will automatically put them into this group for you. Okay. So the registering bit in the background, it automatically drops them into that group. Um, you may or may not want to use that, but it's just it's available to you if you um, so need it. Okay. Next, we're going to look at events. So an event, if you remember, is a group of opportunities that has something in common. Let's go to opportunities, down to events. Okay, we can add an event here. Put in the event name. Um, tennis tournament. I spelled that wrong, I think. Okay, it puts in the, this is the events profile page. I mentioned before, it's a mini web page with, with images and information just about the event showing opportunities that are linked to that specific event. This is the web page here. Okay, so it's essentially going to be that forward slash tennis tournament. You can change that if you want it to be something different. Click on the add new event, and it's going to take us to the page where we say, okay, what do you want it to look like, this page? What images do you want to add to it? So I can add a new image. I don't have any tennis images, I'm afraid, so I'm just going to choose um, I've got anything down here slightly different. Let's choose that image there. Okay, uploads the image here. Excellent, and I can move it around if I want to. Click on the Save button if I'm happy with it. Okay, let's save the image now. Further down here, I've got um, the the link, the events web page link, which we've mentioned before. Um, who can edit? Who can edit the um, the actual uh, event? And then beneath there, we've got the event information. Now you probably won't see the Welsh side here. Don't worry about that. The tennis tournament. Um, about my event. So you put your event information in there. Okay, you've got some basic formatted options here if you want to play around with them. And make sure you click save at the bottom. Okay, so we've now got our events page set up. Normally, the next step you do is you go on to create the opportunities. We've kind of created the opportunity first and the event second, which is a bit strange, but it's just for training purposes. So what I'm going to do is go back into that opportunity and, and link it to this event. So we go to my opportunities. Click on the opportunity name. Okay, go down to the details of the opportunity. Down here is that field that says, is it part of a part of an event? Yes, it is. Select the event, and I can select the event down here. Tennis tournament. Okay, and click on save. It's smashing. So that's added to the event now. So anyone who goes to the events page, if I show you from the volunteers perspective how that's going to look. Okay, so this is the volunteers page now. When they go to search for opportunities, okay, they can search for the individual opportunities down here. And if I search for tennis in here, I'd find that, that coaching opportunity. But they've also got the events here on the right hand side. Okay, but there'll be one down here which says tennis tournament. There's the image. If I click on it, it takes me through to that events profile page with the information about the event and any opportunities like tennis coach, which are available within that particular event. Okay, finally, we're going to look at um, users. So you can add under account, you can go down to users here. Um, you've got your public profile page, organization details, email log, which is like your email audit, what's you've, what you've sent out to people, and you've got users. So if you wanted to, you could add um, another login user. Okay. It doesn't change who the, the emails will all still go to you. 
okay but if you want somebody else to be able to log in to you to your provider as your provider essentially you can add their um, add them onto your account there and finally um, we have the oh, there is reports in there so have a look at the reports um, there's lots of different reports kind of self-explanatory but um, finally we got the help resources so those are video video tutorials on here okay on everything and anything within here um, we've also got um, uh, help one of the first things you do if you ever get stuck I would suggest is um, use the help icon in the top right hand corner okay so this knows what page you're looking at and it will show you the help topics related to the page you're actually looking at so this is the create opportunities page and as you see it's got all these different topics down here and we, if you click on them it'll bring it up and even load up the videos in a short while and then a bit slow there it will show the videos um lots of videos and things that you can watch on these opportunities so um and for the last page we have actually haven't covered i suppose is the your first page called the your landing page the first page that opens when you log in to show you all your relevant information that you we think you you know you're going to be you're going to find useful how many volunteers are linked through to you how many um hours have been logged how many opportunities um you've created how many sessions there are on those op on that opportunity um and then we've got emails and this kind of like basic activity what open opportunities you've got open being ones that volunteers can join and any kind of tasks that i think you might be interested in or you might you might want to know about so hopefully you find that useful um i suggest that you uh crack on as soon as you possibly can get yourself registered on there invite those i'll probably do it in this order register create your profile your profile page um uh, and then add um your opportunities and then invite volunteers register profile page add opportunities then invite volunteers um, and that's it you're away so I hope you find that useful